In this video, we are going to be looking into the future of 3D printing by taking a quick look at the past to the Midwest Rep Rap Festival. Do you want to try out some fun new filaments, but don't want to commit to a whole spool? It sounds like you need the 3D Printing Professor Filament of the Month Club. Each month you'll receive a generous coil of just a good stuff, enough to play with but not so much that you'll feel guilty later. Thanks 3D Printing Professor! Wait, that's me. Join the Filament of the Month Club today. I got to go to the Midwest Rep Rap Festival, which was made possible by the supporters of the Low Poly Dino Kickstarter. And I really appreciate not just their support, but their suggestion that I go to the Midwest Rep Rap Festival because this event was holy smokes it was transformative i've still got so many things so many maker coins and and stickers and and a ton of business cards to go through and i just have so much it's 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 overwhelming the amount of stuff that i got there and that i still need to sort through but so many good things were there and i met so many great people i i just i honestly don't know what I'm going to do with with all of these maker coins. I need a project for them. I do want to mention that I am starting the next Kickstarter. I'm, I'm ramping up to it right now, and it's going to be a bit of a departure. Instead of being sharp and angular dinosaurs, it's, it's going to be soft and round and cute animals. So if you'd like to know more about that, there will be a link in the description. I hope that you will check this out and... Uh, and support me on it when that comes around but it occurred to me while i was at the midwest rep rap festival that the people at the midwest rep rap festival are really the people who are moving 3d printing forward they're the ones who are trying out the new technology developing the new technology and making the advancements that we're going to see in commercial 3d printers or the 3D printers that you will be able to buy commercially in two to five years. But right now, those advancements aren't available. They haven't percolated down yet. And so if you go to a RepRap festival, you'll be able to see these advancements firsthand. And it's super cool. So here's eight really cool advancements that I'm looking forward to seeing in the next generation of 3D printers that you'll be able to buy. The first big advancement that I saw was machine bed leveling tramming. I can't say bed leveling because they say bed leveling when it's really level correction. And this isn't that. What people are doing now is instead of using two motors to move the Z-axis, which a lot of 3D printers do, they use three. And you might think, what do you need three for? Well, it's very simple. If you have a sensor, on your nozzle or near your nozzle or sometimes actually it is the nozzle once it moves it senses that then you can sense close to the first motor and sense close to the second motor and close to the third motor and then move those motors individually and level the bed so you can have a perfect level every time now so far the only 3d printer i've seen that does anything near that is the da vinci color but now with just instead of using two using three motors any 3d printer can have that and so i'm super looking forward to that possibility it's it's cheap it's a simple upgrade i don't know why nobody thought of it before now in this discussion i don't want to talk about specific hardware that's going in there i don't want to drop names but to be honest this three motor bed tramming is only made possible because of the duet 3d board they're the ones who put that into their firmware so that everybody can be using it so while i don't want to say specifically that the future 3d printers will have duet boards in them they're going to have something very much like a duet board if they're going to have these advancements which means that we're probably going to get to see a couple of the other perks of a duet board. Wi-Fi transmission of G-code? Absolutely. A touchscreen interface? You bet. Although if I'm being critical, I feel like the duet touchscreen interface is a little bit too 
rough for the consumer market. It's it's perfect for the people who are making 3D printers on their own. Yes, because they want to have a screen that has all the data so that they can check it out. But for the average consumer, they might want to see the model that they're printing and how much longer it's going to take, but they don't want to see all the data on there. And so I feel like that touchscreen interface is going to need a few iterations before it gets to the consumer market but I definitely expect to see it on there. And we're already seeing that in a lot of the, the 3D printers that are coming out right now. So I think that one's a safe bet. Now, another thing that I saw in a lot of 3D printers out there is a very interesting change to the movement system. In the past, we've used lead screws or we've used rods, but at the Midwest RepRap Festival, so many of those 3D printers we're using linear rails. Linear rails have advantages, but so far I've only ever seen them on Delta printers. People were using linear rails on their Cartesian XY machines. So linear rails were all over the place. In fact, uh, I've got their sticker right here. There's a company whose entire business plan is let's make 3D printers with linear rails. They're called Railcore, and you should check them out. They've got a great idea about just moving forward with this. And yes, their Railcore systems do use duet board, so they got all those little perks with them. I want to say that future 3D printers are all going to have enclosures on them. And a lot of the printers at the Midwest RepRap Festival did. If they didn't have an enclosure, they were so close to having an enclosure. Just put a door on the front and on the top and they'd have been done for it. And part of the reason is because Cartesian XY was the big movement system. And part of the reason for that was because we saw a lot of the next big technology tool changers. E3D of course was showing off their tool changer and it is really slick but there were a lot of people who were making their own tool changers or using the E3D process to jump off of and and make their own iterations of them. Now why are tool changers so exciting? It's not just about being able to do dual or multi-material prints. Although that is an important part of it, having a nozzle that sits off to the side so it doesn't drool and travel with it, and a nozzle that can be at a different temperature means that we can not just mix different colors, but different entire materials. And what's interesting is a lot of these tool changers were direct drive. Now the E3D is a Bowden drive, but I really like the people who were trying to mount the the direct drive on the tool changer. I think that's really cool. But more than that, these tool changers are, they're open to having other technologies added onto them. You want to have a pen or a Dremel tool on there so you can do cutting or drawing or whatever other technologies, whatever advancements you see in the future of well, desktop manufacturing or rapid prototyping can be done with a tool changer machine. You just, well, I don't need four nozzles. Let's do three or two and change those out for other tools. Or maybe let's have five tools or six in there if we can fit it all in there. So it's got that possibility. It, it opens it up for people in the future. And I'm excited to see where tool changers will take us in the future. As for what nozzles we're going to see in our future 3D printer, it's really a toss up. The mosquitoes were making a good showing, but the volcano nozzle was also there and I liked what I was seeing with them. I can't really choose between these two technologies and which one I think is going to be dominant in the future. We'll just have to sit and see, but I definitely think that future 3D printers are going to have an improvement in the nozzle technology. Now, there were a couple other technologies that we probably aren't going to see in the future, but oh, were they cool. For instance, the Infinite Z, a, a, a build platform that was a conveyor belt that you can constantly work on. There was a guy there and he built his own infinite z now the x and y are tilted on this printer so that as it moves it can just keep building and building and building those next layers and it was so pretty 
It was so professional looking that people were coming up to him. Throughout the entire show, I kept hearing, how much is this? And he would go, well, I don't know. I built it for this much, so you could probably know. Like, no, 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 no. I want to buy the kit. I want to buy this machine. How much would it cost me? And he's like, I'm not selling it. Except he is now, which is another great thing to come out of the Midwest RepRap Festival. Now, are we going to see these conveyor belt build systems on 3D printers in the future commonly? Probably not, but it's exciting to see that we're finally working the kinks out of that enough that we're getting actual viable commercial products out of it. There were also a lot of mosaic pallets there, splicing filaments together so that we can do multi-material out of a single nozzle. And that was super cool to see people making that work. Now, I will be playing with a mosaic pallet here in the very near future, so I'll be able to tell you a little bit more about that. But are we likely to see that being a common feature in future 3D printers? Probably not both the mosaic pallet and a tool changer. It just seems redundant to have both of those things. Then again, if your tool changer is busy with not 3D printing tools and you've only got one nozzle, maybe yes, we'll see both a pallet and a tool changer in the same machine. Who knows? Now, of course, the downside of these technologies is that they are premium. That is to say, we're probably not going to see them in the next iteration of the Ender or whatever cheap 3D printer we get from China. Some of them may be. Having, instead of two motors, a third motor running your Z build plate, yeah, that's feasible and we might see that. But other things, we'll have to see. We are oftentimes in the race to the bottom with our technology, so it's possible that we will see these showing up sooner rather than later. And Quite frankly, I'm kind of looking forward to it. Now, I have to admit that these, seeing these technologies already being put to good effect and looking forward and saying, man, the next generation of 3D printers are going to have these things, it's kind of soured me on getting another 3D printer for a little while. Anytime I see another 3D printer, I'm like, yeah, but how soon before these new technologies are being put in there? And I don't like being in that mental position because I, I really don't feel like you should ever delay getting into 3D printing, even though you can look on the horizon and see something new. I want to be clear. None of these are guaranteed. There's no manufacturer saying, oh, we're implementing this and we're implementing this. These are all only in the hobbyist. So it might be another two to five to 10 years before we see these in a form that you could be able to buy. So if you're kind of on the edge of buying a 3D printer and you haven't done it yet, do it. Don't let this conversation stop you from doing it because we're probably further away from them than, well, than I'd like to think. I want to thank the Low Poly Dino Kickstarter backers for getting me to the Midwest Rep Rap Festival. And I do have more to talk about it in a future video. I also want to thank all the many, many people that I met there. Thank you guys very much for being so welcoming and, and open and just for being awesome and doing awesome things with 3D printing. Quite frankly, I want to do it again. I really did enjoy it. In fact, I really hope that my next Kickstarter takes off because I probably kind of have to be at the East Coast Ref Craft Festival. There's going to be a special guest there who I might have kickstarted getting him there, so I probably should go. Before we go, check out this cool project on the What You Making channel on my Discord. Why don't you stop by and check out what other cool projects are there. And hey, if you share something you've done, maybe you'll see it in a future video too. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, if I mentioned anything in this video, you'll find a link to it in the cards and you should check that out. Did you know that I'm social? I've got links to all the socials and you should stop by and say hi. I really kind of enjoy it when that happens. Big thanks go out to my direct backers. And if you want to know more about how you can become that, there'll be a link right here that you can check out. And as always, I want to remind you safety first because I care about you and I'll see you next time. Oh, that's interesting. 
classic one there. Or if they didn't have enclosures, they were so close to having enclosures. Enclosures. Bleh. 